What's the link between first principles and Darwinian evolution? Now, what's very important to understand is that whenever ideas are put forward, there's actually assumptions behind those ideas. Now, imagine this particular scenario. Imagine there is somebody who is a theist and somebody who is an atheist or somebody believes in God. They believe that God can actually create and God has created life and you have somebody who believes that is impossible. Now, those are two first principles that people are coming with. There is a person who's saying, I don't believe in God. And there's somebody who says, I do actually believe in God. Now, I'm not going to, uh, because obviously there's a hierarchy of first principles. I'm not going to challenge whether this person's first principles, uh, the atheist is actually correct or not, or whether the theist has justification in starting off with that principle. That can be for another video. What I'm actually speaking about is if you put on those two lenses, are you going to look at the world in a different way? Of course you are. So from a theistic point of view, you're going to look at biological life in a completely different way to somebody who looks at the world from a purely materialistic or naturalistic point of view. Now, from a naturalistic point of view, you are going to basically say, look, everything can be explained via physical processes or physical things. That's it. We can actually use those tools. When it comes to the theist, they think, do you know what? Yes, physical things, uh, physical processes are possible. Physical matter can explain things too, but there is also a creator. And the creator can create via, the creator can create directly or indirectly, or, or indirectly, but overall the creator is the creator of all things. And he has power of all things and he's created all things. So using these two people with these two different conceptual tools to look at the world, you're going to come up with different understandings of the world. Now, if somebody, if say these two people are given the biological theory of evolution, it's presented to them, they're going to actually look at it in two different ways. Now imagine both of these people don't have a science background and they just have a basic understanding. Or it doesn't matter even if they have an advanced understanding, but just for the sake of simplicity, imagine they approached and they're given for the first time this biological theory of evolution, Darwinian evolution. They're actually given this theory. Now, the issue is that this particular theory from an academic point of view is something which is not pushed for, which is not understood by academics to be absolutely true. It's based on a probabilistic framework which has assumptions and there are disputes about it from a conceptual and scientific perspective. However, when this is presented to two people, the person who is a theist is just going to is going to be more likely to accept it as a scientific theory at its face value, as it basically is understood academically. He is most likely, if he is to go that far, you know, some theists will just completely reject it and say it's not even science. But if he was nuanced, he'd say, okay, fine, I can accept this as a valid scientific theory, although it, it you know, it, it may. Uh, uh, I, I may not believe it to be absolutely true because of the, the evidence, but, you know, I can accept it as a working model. Now, from an atheistic perspective, he's going to be more inclined to accept it not just as a working model, but to be absolutely true, to be literally true. Why is that? The reason that is the case is because even if this theory did not exist, his worldview supports something like this anyway. So, in other words, if there was no God, and imagine Darwin didn't really exist and, you know, we didn't really have the scientific revolution, any, anything like this, right? And there is somebody who doesn't believe in God and they're an atheist and they're looking at the world. If that person was to go and look at the world and look at the, the, the biological life around them, they would basically come up with something like proto-Darwinism, something Darwinian, something naturalistic, something in which you get lots and lots of complexity going back in time until you get very simple beginning. Something like that has to be true as a matter of logic. If atheism is true, if naturalism is true, something like a Darwinian naturalistic process has to be true as a matter of logic. So hence why when you have an atheist and a theist and they're presented with the evidence of a valid scientific theory. One is more likely to just accept it as what it is and the other is more likely to go beyond the evidence and say it's literally true because even if that theory did not exist, 
their worldview actually support something like that theory. Now, what this basically boils down to in the lesson to take away the upshot of all this is basically that the worldview that you begin with dictates the way that you're actually going to interpret certain things which are presented to you. And that's really the crux of the matter when it comes to these sort of debates about intelligent design, creationism, Darwinism, atheism. That's what it really breaks down to. Which worldview do you actually begin with and how does that affect the way that you interpret reality? I hope in this video you've understood the main crux of the issue when it comes to this particular debate. For more videos about Darwinian evolution, make sure you subscribe to Darwinian Delusions.